Hey there and welcome. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations and I'm so happy that you're joining me today. We are going to be doing something a little bit different. So if you've been here before, if you've subscribed and you're a regular um, on to the, to the site, thanks for joining us again. But we're doing a little bit of a different project today. So I hope you think that it's as, as just as stinking cute as I do. If you're new, then I am excited for you to be joining me on this particular project. So what we're gonna be doing, we are going to make a little hedgehog. Okay, I think these are adorable. Now, um, I saw someone make these and I think it's where the gnomes are, where the gnomes are. Now she did hers differently than I'm going to. Okay, one, because, you know, I have to use what I have. And um, she had too many steps for me. <laughs> so I needed to simplify it. So she had made the form from tin foil and covered it in tape and all this kind of stuff. And I'm kind of going, yeah, um, I'm gonna do IOD clay, air dry clay, because one, I have it. And two, it just seemed way easier to attach because I don't have to be doing tons of gluing and I just, I like easy. So I'm gonna show you how I made this guy. And really, it's, it's not that involved. So the first thing, I am using the IOD air dry clay. And the amount of clay that you use determines the finished size of your hedgehog. So I'm gonna do one that's maybe a little bit smaller. So with your air dry clay, always, always, always remember, put it back in the baggie so you're not drying everything out. And I did print out just a couple of little picks of them. Now she made one of these that's lying on its back and it's got its little paws and things. Um, I'm, I'm gonna work up to that. <laughs> I, I just decided to start with ones that didn't have little paws and <laughs> it's just, you know, not driving myself crazy. So that's what I'm making with you today. You just want to kind of push your clay and we're gonna shape it. And really, really, we're not doing a major shaping. So it's almost like it's gonna look like a little mouse. So we are just having the rounded rounded body and then kind of pinching a little bit of the nose forward and right so it's going to be sitting flat pinch the nose forward a little bit and then I just kind of pushed my two fingers in can you see that to, to create little indentations and that kind of gave me a little bit of an idea of roughly where you know eyes would go and how to be able to, to do that. So it helped when I was looking at adding some of my, my color in there and my little bristles. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is you can see that like on their bodies, they're kind of beige on the underside. The snout gets a little bit brown and then the darker bristles on top. So I just found my bristles are black because that's what I found. And so I am just going to paint that upper part of the body, just roughly where I'm gonna be attaching those bristles. I'm just gonna paint it black. And just because when I push into the clay that it reduces the amount of the white clay that's showing, this isn't a critical thing. So. You could skip this if you want. And um, I didn't paint it at first, but, and it's just kind of rough. It, it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, dead easy so far. So for the bristles, now she used like a, a shoe brush, like one of those buffer brushes. And I couldn't find those. And again, I kind of made one first because I thought I would suck at it. <laughs> In which case, why well, film it? <laughs> if, I'm, if, if it's gonna suck and it's gonna look nothing like a hedgehog, then you'll never see this and 
I don't have to film it. Um, instead, despite my, my lack of skill perhaps, it turned out. So I bought just a little hand mopper thing from the dollar store. And so all I did was I just pulled out relatively easily. Now, so you can see how many I used. At first I was cutting them and then I realized I could just pull them out and it was so much easier just to pull them. Um, so how much I used, maybe about, what's that? Probably a little, about a third um, on the one hedgehog. So you use a fair number of bristles because we're getting a lot out. So all I did was just kind of pull them out of there and cut them down. So these ones, the little bristles on the end are all kind of jagged, right? They're just kind of rough and jaggedy. So I just cut those ends off so that I didn't end up with all those little jaggedy pieces. And maybe it's designed that way because it helps catch dust, but I'm not gonna be dusting with my hedgehogs, though I didn't. So I cut off roughly about one inch pieces. And I was getting about, you know, roughly three cuts. And then this little end, which has a little bit of a metal tip, I put off to the side because I used those too, right? So I just found it easiest to kind of cut a bunch of them, stack them all up, and just have them ready and waiting. Now, let me show you how we're doing this. So I just take a little bit of a handful of them, well, a little bit of a fingerful, right? So where, where can you see? Against my hand, there you go. So a little fingerful, and I just kind of flatten them out so that they're not all just bunched up into a tight grouping. And I, I found it easiest to kind of start at the back and just, there you go, push them in. So it looks like you've got a little, little fan tail back there. And then you just continue around. And you kind of use that black paint edging as a bit of your, your guideline. And I just found it easiest to kind of go around in my circle first and kind of stick them all in. Now, if you were using something else, I mean, she was having to dip into glue and attach them and all that kind of stuff. But what I found was, you know, this one, these, these are kind of in there. Now, I could pull them out if I needed to. The air dried clay is still kind of drying because this is a blob of it. Um, I made this yesterday. Um, it'll shrink a little bit and kind of hold them in. This isn't something that I'm gonna be playing with. It's a decorative item. So they're gonna stay in there. If you were worried about it, you could take your little ends, right? And you could dip this end into a little bit of white glue that's gonna dry clear and then stick it into your clay. So if you wanted, and you wanted to make sure that it was more secure, then you could do that. That would be fine. I'm lazy, and I didn't. And I'm lazy enough that even though I figured out I could do that and it would be even more secure, I'm still not doing it. <laughs> because I'm not giving this to like, you know, a three-year-old to, to play with and have them pull out all of the little bristles. So. We just continue going around all of the edging, right? And creating our hedgehog bristles. So it's, it's a little futzy, but it's not hard, right? So I'm just going to go all the way around my hedgehog and I will then take it all the way across the top and then I will just start working on the inside and filling it kind of as much and as, as tight as I can, cutting more bristles as I need them. Right? But 
already you're kind of seeing how this works. I gotta tell you, every time I move, I smell skunk. My dog got kind of roughly skunked this morning and that is just a smell that lingers no matter what you do. Okay, so this is all that I'm going to continue to do is just literally taking this, flattening them out between my fingers and pushing those little bristles in and I just find, I just keep my thumb right in one of those eye sockets because then um, I've already got an indentation there. So as I push it, and don't worry if you've got gaps in this because as the bristles start to fill in, it starts to look very full. And again, that's one of the reasons that we painted it black so that my black bristles would um, sort of disappear against that that black coating. If you have a brown brush, right? If you happen to find a little shoe shoe thing and you're doing it with the shoe brush instead of uh, this, then cool. But again, super easy to have found that in um, the dollar store and uh, it makes it uh, not a very expensive project at all. And you can see that I'm not even measuring these. I'm, I'm just eyeballing them. So it, it's not an exact science either, right? It's not a big deal if they're a little bit, a little bit different, a little bit off. It'll still all work out because we get to trim them up later. So I'm just gonna carry on cutting these up, sticking them in and then I'll come back at you when I've almost got that done so that we can see the next steps in the process. But so far, you're with me, right? Not hard. So I have most of my little bristles in there and I have some of these little leftover pieces that have the little spiky end. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of push them in just around the base, they're, they're gonna be a little bit shorter than some of my um, other ones, but they're pretty secure. So I'm just adding those. It's just kind of like an extra little, I don't know, reinforcement, you know, little, little support for the rest. And they just push in nice and easy because they're already already all attached together. They're kind of like a little, a little hair plug. <laughs> there we go. All right, so next step. We've got all these bristles in and I'm just gonna leave them for now. You can take them and start trimming them down and creating kind of a little more sculpted look where you haven't been perfectly even. And let's face it, there's no way you're gonna be pushing them all in nice and even, but they trim up nice and easily with a pair of decent scissors and you can kind of just even them out a little bit. The next part that we wanna work on is the face. And for this, I'm just looking to see if I have any little piece of paper or plastic here to use. And of course, no. Um, but what we want to do, let me just take my bag here and I'll use this, is we want to have some glue. So you can use like white glue. This is an Elmer's glue. It just happens to be transparent. So you can use a white glue. Any kind of craft glue would work and I have a little paintbrush. So if you look at your hedgehog, you can see that a lot of the underbody is all sort of a creamy white. So what I have is this kind of yarn and I'm just going to shade it. I'm just going to cut it up so I have little pieces of yarn that I'm going to use. So 
just cutting it in small little little fluffy pieces that I'm going to be able to attach in with my glue. Right, so just kind of squishing it around. I'm gonna need more than that actually. Just looking because what I want to do is the whole underside of the body and all of the face as well, so that um, this layer is all done. We'll add another little layer. They've got that darker area around the snout and the eyes. So we'll add another little air layer of um, fluff. <laughs> fluff that uh, we'll use as well. But let's see how this goes for this. Now, before I get too carried away, the other piece that I will need is I need some eyes. So I don't have any black pins, but what I am going to use are, I'll just get this last one out. I've got some blue ones. Um, but they are just the little rounded head pins, right? So they'll give kind of a good little, little beady eye. And I'm just going to paint the black, you know, in a pinch. So we just got a little uh, permanent marker. This is a paint marker, but you could use a Sharpie. And I'm just going to paint them black. I'm just going to stick them in my, my rope over there so that they just stay up out of the way. And hopefully they'll dry off by the time I need them. Okay, so those are my eyes drying. And we've got my, my white fluff. And what I'm now going to do is I've got some jute. And I'm just going to really lightly and easily just kind of shave my jute into small little shaved furry pieces as well. And this is gonna be that, that dark edging around the face and the eyes, the nose. And if you just kind of shave it off like in little pieces, it works quite nicely. Okay, we'll see if that's enough. I can always can always make more shavings. All right, so what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna start with the with the underbody first, um, because, oh, I totally forgot I had glue on that. I'll take it off of where I ended up sticking it. So we're just gonna paint up to where we've got all of our all of our little bristles sticking out. And we're just gonna push our little, little shavings down into the glue. And I'm gonna do the same for the entire upper face. So let me just get them all on first. So lots of glue. you'll end up with shavings, little fur shavings on your, on your brush, that's okay. And we're just gonna stick more of these in around there too. So you don't have to worry about getting too much because it's not all going to stick on there, right? We get to pull the excess off. And then start just pushing it into place. Right, this is where we kind of reshape it. We're gonna add a bunch. You get you get messing on your fingers too, the glue on your fingers. But just kind of pat it all, pull off any of the excess that you need to. 
so that we end up with it all well adhered and tamped down. And then we're going to put kind of a layer of, of, of our glue down over where we're going to want our secondary color, our light brown color to show. So make it a little bit sticky and then stick a little bit of that darker jute shavings down around. And we don't need it to be heavy. We just, it's almost like it's a shading, right? We're just using that to kind of shade what their little fur would be in that area. And then again, we're gonna be, okay, this is, this is where a wet cloth, if I'd anticipate it would come in handy because I've got all kinds of little furs <laughs> sticking all over my fingers. All right, so have a, have a wet cloth, a little, little wet wipe with you to be able to get that. For our eyes, all that I want to do is, is cut this pin. I don't wanna stick this whole big pin into um, my hedgehog. So I'm going to cut it off. So I'm cutting off almost, I'm cutting off almost an inch of the pin. So I'm just left with, let me make sure I put the, put the little metal pin part someplace where you're gonna remember where it is. And I'm going to stick in his nose. So putting the nose on the little tip there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two and sticking them up kind of almost where I had those two little divots, right, that I had started with. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut those off. other and then we are done folks then we are just looking at leaving it to dry so the body is going to take a little bit to dry because it's got that air dry clay in there that's uh gonna have to sit all right i didn't wait for my paint to be dry so let me just touch up a little bit and then we'll leave his nose to dry. And there's our little hedgehog. How cute is he? So you can angle your bristles forward if you want so that he looks like he's kind of got a furrowed brow. You can have them coming straight up. You get to cut this down as short or as long as you want. I noticed that these guys have like little white tips. So you could take some white paint and just kind of Take your brush lightly over the top of the surface to get a little bit of variation there if you would like. Um, but I think that these are super sweet and they really make up quite quickly and without too much difficulty, right? I still have, um, I still have a hedgehog's worth of, of my broom left. So um, really I could make three out of that and that was like a dollar 75 here in Canada and then my air dried clay a little tiny tiny minuscule amount of yarn and a couple of head pins that I got uh, with the ball ends that I got from the dollar store as well so they're not very expensive but I could see like a little grouping of them that would be super sweet and really cute let me know if you give this a try I think that you'll have a lot of fun with it it really makes up pretty fast I swear and um yeah, they're, they're super cute. I'll take some closer pics for you once they're all kind of dried up and you can see for yourself, but let me know how it goes. Until next time, I'm Cindy Daycheck. Take care.